executed in rupture with protruded legs in a large amino cell. Definition Uterine rupture during advanced station is considered a late complication due to the myometrial damage. Uterine rupture implies a defect in the uterine musculature with extravasation of fetal parts and intra-amniotic contacts into the peritoneal cavity. Uterine dysesmus is classically defined as a separation of the uterine musculature without extravasation of the intra-amniotic contacts and fetal parts into the peritoneal cavity. What causes? Exist many causes, but the principles are surgical intervention affecting myometrium, like cesarean section, rupture uterine repair, myomectomy with cavity entry uterine dissection, deep resection of the interstitial wall of the fallopian tube, uterine trauma has blending, posture injury, congenital anomaly like pregnancy in undeveloped uterine horn. The rupture is more common in women who have already had five or more children who have a very distending uterus. Abnormalities relate to the placenta or fetal position as well as several trauma to the abdomen may increase the risk of uterine rupture. Things and symptoms like abdominal pain, chest pain, pain between the scapulae or inspiration pain, hypovolemic shock caused by a hemorrhage, falling blood pressure, things associated with fetal oxygenation, tachycardias, bradycardias, absent fetal heart activity by ultrasound examination, cessation of uterine contraction, palpation of fetus outside the uterus, and sink of abdominal pregnancy. Uterine rupture is basically a situation where babies inside the uterus the uterus actually splits apart in the labor process and the baby comes out of the uterus suffers lack of oxygen to the brain and can suffer birth asphyxia and HIE this typically occurs in a situation where they're performing a VBAC that's a vaginal birth after c-section so once a mom has a c-section Typically, in subsequent deliveries, she will have another C-section because the risk is that the baby can suffer lack of oxygen to the brain if you try to do a vaginal birth. Um, a uterine rupture is the biggest risk of doing a VBAC, vaginal birth, after C-section, and one that mothers across the country need to know about. Many times, mothers are not aware of this and will attempt a vaginal birth after C-section at times, in lower situations, this can be done, but in many times, there are very high risk to doing this and it shouldn't be attempted. Some doctors will try to attempt it anywhere, anyway. There will be uterine rupture, the baby will suffer lack of oxygen to the brain and HIE, permanent brain damage. If your baby was injured in the birthing process due to a uterine rupture during a VBAC procedure, go to abclawcenters.com. We're happy to discuss this with you. The treatment. The
principal treatment is to stop the contraction through tacolytics, remove oxytocin, maneuvers and instrumentations are contraindicated, treatment of oligoemic shock, emergency exploratory laparotomy with cesarean delivery accompanied by fluid and blood is the most common treatment for a uterine rupture. Depending on the nature of the rupture and the condition of the patient, the uterus may either be repaired or removed. as it is an incomplete rupture, does not represent a problem for the life of the fetus anymore. The growth of the fetus can continue normally until their delivery. It never represents a problem in cesarean delivery. As a cause, we have that it is occurred an incomplete rupture before delivery, the fetus die. There is only one method of safe diagnostic, the ultrasound. The mother can be very affected by the hypovolemic shocks and hemorrhages, Rupture can be asymptomatic. In an extremely rare medical case, a gestating baby's legs can be seen protruding out of the mother's uterus. An ultrasound image showing the unusual positioning and a description of the contributing circumstances were recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine. In the study, the French doctors wrote that a 33-year-old asymptomatic woman presented at 22 weeks of gestation with a large herniation of the amniotic sac through the left uterine wall that was detected by routine ultrasonography. Through scanning, they were able to eventually determine that she had a rupture in her uterine wall, which part of the amniotic sac ended up protruding through. One of the doctors told the Washington Post that there are only 26 other cases of this occurrence that have been recorded. He also indicated that the fetal legs did not cause the rupture. 
Instead, the likely cause is believed to be scarring from her five previous C-sections, which prevented the uterus from expanding as usual. First and foremost, I want to express my sympathy to you and tell you how sorry I am for the loss of your baby boy. I can't imagine what you must be going through right now, and I can understand why you're depressed and having a hard time. It's good that you've sought counseling and help and that you're on antidepressants. Um, but you, you asked a really good question. What does this mean for future pregnancies? And I can definitely see why you might want to have another baby. The situation you described was very traumatic. And it sounds like you had two C-sections in the past and then your uterus ruptured with the, with the delivery of your baby boy. Many doctors do allow their patients to try for a vaginal birth after two C-sections because the risk of uterine rupture is only 1%. But Unfortunately for you, that did happen, and um, it can be potentially life-threatening for mothers and babies. Um, the risk to future pregnancies, both to you and future children, is great after already having a uterine rupture. Because you're wanting more babies, I recommend talking with a doctor, and if you don't feel like you want to go back to the doctor you were at before, that's totally understandable. But pick an OB provider of your choice, a high-risk doctor, and let them know about your experience, and they can determine what what would be best for you. They can talk to you about your experience and shed some light on it perhaps and also come up with a plan if they do decide that it's okay for you to get pregnant. Not many studies can be done on the risk of uterine rupture after a prior uterine rupture because it just doesn't happen that frequently. For one, the risk of rupture is so low and number two, um, many women whose uterus rupture choose not to have more babies. But the, the limited studies that have been done have shown that there's a 22% all the way up to 100% risk of the uterus rupturing again. And it can happen any time during the pregnancy, including the second trimester, or during labor and delivery. So again, this is a good conversation to have with your doctor. They can determine what would be best for you. Because of course you have two little girls who rely on you and a husband who loves you and you want to take good care of them and be there for them as well. I, I hope the best for you and my heart goes out to you and if in the future I can help you with anything, I'd love to do it. Always feel free to ask questions if you have them. As a conclusion, we can say that since the uterine rupture is likely to incur even if there are not risk factors, a spontaneous rupture should be considered in pregnant mothers with symptoms. In terms of diagnostic, 3D ultrasound is more likely to provide better information on the location or the size of a rupture. Thank you.